welcome to Frigid Friday, not Fridays, um, because this has become a rarity. That's right. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you all doing? Welcome to everybody at home. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. The sun is shining 24 hours a day. And we all know why. Uh, because Donald Trump has caused a massive erection in the United States and, um, we have blown the load and he's gone. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that today. Schumer had a little, a little trip up with his words. Instead of insurrection, he said erection, not sure how you get those two mixed up. I really, I mean... I just, you know, I'm German, so I'm going to go with Freud on that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, Chuck, you know, good for you. Good for you that you're thinking about erections. You're an old man and uh, we support you. We support all the erections that you want, Chuck. Okay. We support your erection. We do not support Donald Trump's erection. Great. Uh, we don't have to talk about him ever again. Yay. Woohoo. How amazing was uh, Amanda Gorman's poem? How amazing was not Lady Gaga? <laughs> Sorry, um, not a fan. But uh, J-Lo, my mom texted me after the inauguration. She said, hi, I just wanted to know how what you thought of the inauguration. Your dad and I were so happy, except Lady Gaga. She is very annoying. At least J-Lo is always just J-Lo. There you go. That's... um. A very uh, a Brecht descendant German intellectual, uh, German Romanian intellectual theater woman's perspective on Lady Gaga and J Lo. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy to be here. We're live from the Crane Theater on Fourth Street in New York City. It's cold outside, but it's warm in our hearts because democracy is back from the dead. That's right. Let's hope it uh, sticks around for a while. We're going to have an amazing show for you tonight. Lots of amazing acts, lots of things that were recorded here at The Crane in the previous weeks. Very exciting stuff. Um, lots of friends of uh, Frigid, obviously, and uh, hopefully friends of yours. If you like what you see, follow the artists, all their social media tags or names or whatever. I'm very old. I'm sorry. I don't know what it's called. Um, uh, we'll be up on your screen. And you can go and follow these people. Just take out your phone, look them up, follow them. It's free. It costs you nothing. Nobody cares how many people you follow. But it means so much to the artist. That's all we have. God damn it. Follow us all. Do it. Uh, you won't be sorry. Everybody that's on the show tonight has got amazing stuff going on. Uh, and become a patron of Frigid NYC. That's right. You get cool perks. You get cool background inside information, um, you get uh, a lifetime of happiness, guaranteed. All right, let's get the show going. I am Lucy Pohl, your host. I haven't introduced myself. I'm sorry for those of you that don't know me, <laughs> which I'm sure that's zero people because I'm very, very famous in my building. Okay, uh, we're going to get it going. We are starting the show with some karaoke uh, from some of our very, very, very talented, frigid friends uh that was all safely recorded here at the crane theater in the previous week so i would say sit back relax democratize yourself that means have a big smile on your face and enjoy the karaoke <laughs> Like walking around this old and empty house. So hold my hand, I'll walk with you, my dear. The stairs creak as you sleep, it's keeping me awake. It's the house telling you to close your eyes. <clears throat> and some days I can't even dress myself. It's killing me to see you this way. Cause though the truth may bury this, ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. 
That I miss our little talks. Soon it will be over and buried with our past. We used to play outside when we were young, full of life and full of love. Some days I don't know if I am wrong or right. Your mind is playing tricks on you, my dear. Cause though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Hey! Don't listen to a word I say. Hey! The screams all sound the same. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Gone, gone, gone away, I watch you disappear. All that's left is a ghost of you. Now we're torn, torn, torn apart, there's nothing we can do. Just let me go, we'll meet again soon. Now wait, wait, wait for me, please hang around. I'll see you when I fall asleep. Hey! Don't listen to a word I say. The screams all sound the same. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Don't listen to a word I say. The screams all sound the same. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. Though the truth may vary, this ship will carry our bodies safe to shore. But well, we're going to sing a song for you tonight, sing a few songs, hopefully. Uh, but this song in particular is a cover. It is by the incomparable Trixie Mattel. And the song is called Soldier. Weirdness seems to follow me wherever I go. Weirdness seems to know me even better than I seem to know myself. I'm someone else. Looking at the clock beside my bed. Am I really? Keeping time, or is time just keeping me instead? Go back to bed. Oh, you've got time to grow. Oh, soldier, take your time. No one said the words all have to rhyme And if they do, it's fine and even if they don't No one needs to know Oh, soldier 
You gotta let things go. The hour hand moves faster with a scotch. Faster every minute when you're in it, if you watch. And I drink a lot. But drinking only wakes you up at ten. Spend the day regretting, but I'm betting that you'll do it all again next weekend. Oh, you've got time to grow. A soldier, take your time. No one said the words all have to rhyme, and if they do, it's fine. And even if they don't, no one needs to know. Oh, soldier. You've got to let things go. Don't look down the barrel with an arrow and a bow. Dress down in apparel and camouflage from head to toe. Everything so sterile in a heavy monotone. Oh, soldier, you've got to let things go. Oh, soldier, take your time. No one said the words all have to rhyme, and if they do, it's fine. And even if they don't, no one needs to know. Whoa, soldier, you've got to let things go.
you enjoyed all of that good, delicious, nutritious stuff. We have more delicious, nutritious stuff coming your way. We are now going to present to you a couple of shorts, and they are curated by our own very old, very, very, very old friend from even before these before times. Um before COVID, BC. <laughs> that just occurred to me. Yep, my brain is working. Uh, Kevin Marr. Yep, that's right, Kevin Marr. And also featuring, among others, some other old friends of ours, Hannah Bowes, Paul Tureen. Uh, The list goes on. You're going to see for yourself. Please have fun. If you're not having fun, it's not our fault. It's your fault, okay? Uh, that's it. Go, enjoy. Go, go, go. Enjoy. Come on. Mm. Oh. Whoa. Who are you? I am a visitor from your future. Years from now, America is threatened by disease, hatred, and political strife. I have come to warn the citizens of the past that- What happens on Lost? What? Yeah, what happens on Lost? Lost, the TV show. Oh my God, does that mean in the future Lost will expand to a film franchise? Or perhaps a series of Mobisodes? That's not important right now. Well, actually, now is 2006, and Lost is quite important. Touché. I've come from the future with a warning. What, what happens, happens on, on Lost? Lost? What happens if they don't push the button? Do Jack and Kate get together? Who are the others? Why does the island have polar bears? Uh, the polar bears were part of an experiment, and I don't remember if Jack and Kate get together. Uh, how can you not remember? Because the show fell apart and people hated the ending. They hated it? Yeah, like the Sopranos finale. What, what happens, happens on, on the, the Sopranos? Sopranos? Okay, enough about prestige TV. Just please listen. We will listen to what happens on the Sopranos. <sighs> Tony and his family go to a diner, and then the screen cuts to black. Some people think this means that Tony got whacked. I think it means that the characters live on, but the audience was whacked. And people hated that more than they hated Lost. Well, people hated it more than they hated Lost, but not as much as they hated the new Star Wars movies. What happens to Star Wars? Wars? Do we finally find out who R2-T2's father is? <gasps> I can't even get a haircut in my future. Fine. Han Solo dies. Luke drinks blue milk and the fans hate women. Your future does sound terrible. Especially the part about the blue milk. It's not all bad. Uh, I really liked Watchmen. They finally make Terry Gilliam's Watchmen. I don't even know where to start with that one. Look, I know all this seems important now, but in the near future, there's serious danger threatening the entire world. Just like the smoke monster. I get that you have questions, but in my future, even getting the mail is dangerous, which is why I need you to listen. What happens on Jericho? How many sequels do they make to the Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow? What's the deal with the Dharma Initiative? Do Kate and Sawyer hook up? Will we ever see Walt again? Do Kate and Juliet hook up? Did the island really cure Rose's cancer? Do Kate and the smoke monster hook up? What do the numbers mean? Is it just me or is Dumbledore gay? Great questions. I can't answer them all, but I've downloaded a podcast about Battlestar Galactica and I will give it to you in exchange for all of your hand sanitizer. Deal. Shake on it. Oh, God, no. What's a podcast? What happens on Pepper Dennis? Dozens of ships have appeared across the country, and just now the aliens leader has told terrified crowds that the American people will be forced to work for the aliens. Silence. Resistance is futile. We have assumed control. Everybody, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hypothetically, 
if we were to go along with your plan to mine the Earth's surface for a strange mineral your planet needs, can gay people get married? Oh, yeah. Oh. Of course, we would not deny the majesty of love. Unrelated question. If a human woman became pregnant but doesn't want to have the baby, is that choice left to her or a bunch of old men? Who Women control their bodies. We only control the harvest of Chemical X. That's what we're doing again. So, um, I don't know if you know this, but on this planet, the soil grows a special kind of herb that can be used for all kinds of uh, useful stuff, like rope. Yes, yes, we will legalize it. <laughs> cool. This might seem weird to ask, but your race has some kind of alien religion, right? You refer to the high priests of Zemlon. Uh, and I, I don't mean to offend you, but um, is there a history of the priests diddling little boys? <gasps> oh, where did that come from? We do not diddle your people. We need you to be healthy and happy so you can deliver a productive 20-hour work week. Oh. <laughs> is that in addition to some other full-time job we have to do? No. You need time available to relax your mind and body. Find meaning in your existence beyond simply harvesting a chemical that will be used to end global warming. Whoa! That's what the minerals are being used for? That is our master plan. But we can't discuss it further with your union rep. Uh, our what? Your union representative. So we have to join a union. Hey, I'm not paying union dues on my 20-hour week planet saving job. I knew this alien invasion was too good to be true. <laughs> we did it! We're free! Yeah. It appears the alien menace has been destroyed. You can now go back to your normal lives. por las esquinas evitando el que dirá mi cuerpo no se acostumbra a este amor entre penumbras que es más fuerte que un volcán ah, we're back are you at the edge of your seat at the edge of your seat on the edge of your seat see this is this is what happens when you um, are an immigrant you don't know you just don't know these things. Whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? It's not about me because we are going to take you live to Sam Hood a drain. Adrian. Uh, I think it's a drain. Joey thinks it's Adrian. We can't agree. Uh, I should have maybe just said Sam Hood. I thought it wasn't fair. If you have a double name, you should be allowed to shout it out there loud and clear. Uh they will tell us which one it is. Very excited. We are going to watch Sam Hood a drain, aka Adrian. Mix some cocktails. What could be better than that? Nothing. I can't wait. Sam Hood a drain, aka Adrian. Please tell us how to pronounce your name. And also, what cocktails are you making? Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And you know, I have to break it to you. Both ways are actually wrong. It is Adrian, kind of pronounced like mountain i don't know it's been haunting me my whole life but i do appreciate that you 
said all three names because sometimes people get confused by the last one and just stop at the hood. Uh, but I'm so excited to be here. I'm happy to be here for Frigid Fridays. Um, and I have a little cocktail segment for you all. Um, I figured what I would do today is tell you how to make one of my favorite cocktails, uh, which is a whiskey sour. Now, a whiskey sour is a classic sour, which means it's two parts uh, liquor, one part simple syrup, and one part sour, which is your lemon juice, your lime juice, your orange juice, that kind of thing. Um, now, I am here quarantined in my apartment with my cats and my girlfriend, and so I'm going to be making a double batch so that we can both enjoy a lovely cocktail um, after this event. And I've sort of pre-measured everything out here. Um, as I said, I'm making a batch so that we can enjoy them for the rest of the night. But if you were doing this at home, you could do just like a, a shot glass uh, per thing. So as I said, first, I have got two parts of bourbon right here. This is the um, cheapest of the middle range bourbons at my local liquor store, um, because it's been a long 10 months, and I, I had to up my game a little bit. So delicious, good bourbon. Uh, again, for my taste, the cheapest at the, uh, at the middle range. Uh, and then what I have here is uh, one part of sour. So this is, uh, as I said, I'm making a batch. This is four lemons, the juice of four lemons. Uh, and then finally here, I have got one part simple syrup. Now what I did with this simple syrup, which for anyone who doesn't know, you make easily on the stove with equal parts water and sugar. You boil them together until the sugar disappears. Be sure not to boil it too much, then you might end up with caramel. Um, and what I did with this is I actually put some lemon rinds, some lemon peels in there while it was boiling. So it's got this sort of lemony essence to it, which is just going to add to the uh, to the simple, I'm sorry, to the whiskey sour. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix these. I, I, I am coming to you live from Brooklyn, so I figured I had to do this in mason jars. Uh, so I'm going to just pour in my lemon juice here, and then um, I don't want to get the rind from this simple syrup, the candied rind, in there just yet. So I'm just going to hold this on the edge and pour in my simple syrup. Now, again, this is two parts liquor, one part sour, one part simple syrup. In my case, lemon simple syrup. Oh, that's really good. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir. Now, the next step is... Oh, that's really fucking good. Um, the next step is a little controversial. Um, I was taught this recipe by my stepfather, who uh, is a big cocktail enthusiast and he likes to do cocktails the right way and so I'm making it the right way tonight and so what I have inside here is an egg white. Uh, some people are uncomfortable eating raw egg whites. Uh, this is not 100% necessary in your whiskey sour if you'd be making it at home but I will say it makes the world a difference. <laughs> it's really really good. So I'm going to pour in my egg white and because I'm here on Frigid Fridays, I wanted to up my game a little bit. So I have this very fancy hand mixer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix that so that the egg white becomes nice and foamy and it's gonna be a really delicious, uh, tasty consistency. If you don't have one of these hand immersion blenders at home, you can use a whisk or a fork. Your arm might get a little tired, but it'll get the job done. So here we go. Yeah. Now I'm gonna get a little closer. I don't know if you can see. It's actually foaming up there. Yes, yes. So I don't want to do it too much. I don't want to be drinking meringue later on tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. You know, I fucked up. I did not get a, uh, get a paper towel ready. Um, I'm sorry in advance. So now I've got my cocktail mixed. It is only time for the finishing touches. Um, I've got a lovely glass here. And what I'm going to do is, ah, yes, thank you, help from behind the screen, appreciate it. I'm going to pour some into this glass here. Oh, what a lovely color. It looks, honestly, it looks almost a little bit like a white Russian. Um, now, I'm going to add one maraschino, ooh, wow, maraschino cherry right there. And finally, for the garnish, I'm also going to do a peel of lemon to make sure that it is all right. You can also add ice. Um, I chilled these glasses ahead of time, so they are nice and cold, and I did not need to do that. Um, but you do want to have this drink cold. You can put some ice in your batch mix, or you can, of course, serve it on the rocks. Um, now, finally, I'm going to use one of these candied lemon peels here. 
I'm gonna add it as a garnish because I know that lemon is my girlfriend's favorite fruit. And she definitely is gonna want a lemon peel there. So here it is folks, whiskey sour. Um, I added a couple extra steps, but it's very easy. It's nice and simple, just two parts whiskey, one part sour, one part simple syrup. Let me just give it a taste before I hand it off to her to make sure it's delicious. Mm. Yeah, oh man, there you go, darling. That is so good. Um, and that is, my, uh, that is my demonstration. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Frigid Fridays, for having me. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram at Sam Hood Adrian or my website, samhoodadrian.com, A-D-R-A-I-N. Uh, or you can check out my theater company, What Will the Neighbors Say? You can check us out at uh, www.wwtns.org, which is also a mouthful. What Will the Neighbors Say? Uh, that's it. That's me. Thank you all so much for watching. And um, I'm going to go ahead and have my one now because I gave the first one away. Hi, my name is Dipti and I'm a playwright and I'm making this video as an appeal to ask you to become a patron of Frigid New York. I have been a fan and advocate of Frigid for many years. Uh, the Frigid Festival was the place where I put up my first play and it was really an indication of how giving a platform to uh, new and emerging artists is something that we need. It's an incubator for uh, talent and experimentation, comedy, and much more. Um, it has been a lifeboat for many, and now I'm asking that we become a lifeboat for it. Just go to patreon.com forward slash frigid New York and see if you're able to uh, join as a patron. There are lots of perks involved in that too, and you can feel good about keeping frigid healthy through this time and beyond. Thank you. All right, all right, all right, we are back. Mmm, that looked like one delicious cocktail. And now we know how to pronounce Sam Hood, Adrian. Adrian, Mountain, Adrian. Yeah, I think I got it right. So every time you want to pronounce his name, just say Mountain first, and then you'll get it. Uh, check him out on Instagram. Check out his website. There's a lot of W's in there, but you can handle it. We believe in you. We have faith in you. We know you can do it. If anyone can do it, you can. Um, democracy has been restored. So I think you can find Sam Hood Adrian's website. Okay. Uh, next, we have a little video coming up. It's a tight 10 minutes. That's right. That's what she said. Uh -huh. Bing. And it's um, from our APAP pitch session. Remember APAP? Yes. A place to sell shows so they could tour for millions of people. That'll happen again, we promise. Um, that happened earlier this month. Hopefully, a, at least a couple of these shows will be touring. When that's a thing, it will be a thing. We know it will be. People will be going nuts for live shows once this is all over. The Roaring Twenties are coming. Um, and uh, yeah, the guy who's going to be doing all the talking is someone who is rarely, rarely, rarely seen um, on that end of the camera. So you're in for a treat. Let's make him very uncomfortable and also give him some love and attention in the comments. Please engage. That's what, what's called engagement. So uh, type your thoughts into the comment section. Um, nothing negative. You know, keep it positive. We're, we've started a new, a new era. And that's it. Just enjoy this. Ten minutes. That's it. In and out. APAP. Here we go. Hey there, I'm Pete, and I want to tell you all about Show Up Kids. Wow. Show Up Kids is the family-friendly show for kids between the ages of 3 and 10, and they're grown-ups, where the kids get to control everything from plot to props, costumes to characters, sound to sight, everything that they see. It's totally engaging, totally fun, and totally, totally unique, because your kids... Because your kids are totally in charge of... Okay, because your kids are totally in charge... Tune in to show up kids or have your kids show up to show up kids. Just don't have your rubber chicken. So don't have, don't, 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 don't. Once upon a time, there was a king who wanted revenge from his enemy. So he prayed day and night in front of fire for a son. 
He was blessed with a son, but also got a daughter, who was named Draupadi. something terribly radical about believing that one's own experience and images are important enough to speak about, much less to write about and to perform. James Baldwin. That quote to me, I believe it fits in perfectly with the mission of the fire this time, because, you know, you in and of yourself are radical and revolutionary by saying, no, actually, this is my story. This is who I am. I am reflecting my idea about myself and not your idea about who I am. That is revolutionary. There is something extremely powerful about standing up and saying that what I have gone through, um, what I represent, who I am, uh, deserves to be seen. Fire This Time Festival is a playwright-driven um, theater festival. They um, are high, uh, very supportive of making sure that playwrights of color get their voices out exactly how they want to get it out. Space for Black artists to be Black in any way, in very diverse ways, is imperative. Hello, my name is Vincent, Vincent van Gogh. And I would like to invite you to join me with Van Gogh Find Yourself. The reason I say Van Gogh is because in America people say Van Gogh. In England people say Van Gogh. In Provence, France, they say Van Gogh. Nobody can pronounce my name. It's Van Gogh. This is why I sign Vincent and all my paintings. If you would like to create with me and find out all the stories behind the paintings, Join me and create without judgment. This is the most important part, to create without judgment and let it happen. Au revoir. I will see you soon. Hello, Frigid New York and Erez Ziv. Thank you so much for all the wonderful um, pieces on the video we just saw. Can you please introduce yourself in Frigid New York? Sure. My name is Erez Ziv. I'm from Frigid New York. We run a couple of small venues uh, here in New York City. And every year we collect some of our favorite shows that have come through the spaces and we think would do fairly well on the road. And we bring them here to APEP. So the five videos uh, you saw today are from five of those shows, and there's a couple that didn't make it into the videos. We have uh, the reparations show that we've been doing uh, since uh, June. Uh, it's so far only been an online show, but hopefully someday it will be a live and in-person show. Uh, and we have A Night with the Dead, which we've been doing for a couple of years now. Uh, every November, it's a great show. Uh, the show is in English with music, with songs in Spanish. Excellent. And can you tell us a little bit more about the reparation show and 
it seems like a lot of these shows are um, digging into some of the great challenges and social injustices and of our time. Tell us a little bit about the reparation show. So the reparation show is a show that we premiered uh, post pandemic. Uh, our first show was on Juneteenth this year, June uh, 19th. Mm. Uh, and it's a variety show. We invite a different host, uh, every week. We've been doing it weekly since June. Uh, every week a, a different host comes and they invite people that they know to be guests on the show. Uh, all the performers and guests are, uh, BIPOC performers and they all get paid obviously to do the show. And then every, not every week, but most weeks, uh, we have a white performer. It's their time to be on the show. Uh, Mike Daisy was uh, the last one we had a couple of weeks ago in December. We haven't done the show since December. We're moving to monthly uh, in 2021 now, <laughs> as as we realize it's going to take a lot longer <laughs> than we originally. Fair, fair enough. And I mean, that's something we could all watch online ourselves too, it sounds like. I'm yep, excited to now that I've learned about it. Excellent. And maybe let's also talk a little bit about, I noticed the piece Honor, Confessions of a Mumbai Courtesan. Um, it looks like a, a lot of fun and a very interesting show. It, it's a beautiful piece. The performer right now is in Mumbai, uh, and it's wonderful. This, this one of the things this this new situation is allowing us is the chance to to work with people while they're not in town a lot more closely. Um, Honor was with us at APAP last year, and, and we had some pretty good interest. And then all this happened, so we figured we'd bring it with us again this year. Uh, it's a beautiful show. It actually ran in our theater uh, after APAP last year. Excellent. And it seems like there's a certain amount that is great for families and also children yeah. as well. Yeah, we have a couple of shows that are good for families and children. Uh, specifically, Van Gogh Find Yourself uh, was a great uh, children's show uh, before the pandemic and has transitioned fairly well onto the online world and also show up kids. Uh, show Up Kids started with us years ago as just Show Up, and it was a show for adults that did very well. Uh, then we created a kids version, Show Up Kids, and it did very well in our theater. We ran it as an ongoing uh, kids show, and it also ran uh, and, and it, it had tour gigs that had to be canceled in April, I believe, uh, in L.A. It, it was touring to Cincinnati before. They toured quite a bit as a live show and transitioned extremely well to online. And now we've been running it online since uh, April, uh, since March, actually. Peter was one of the first people to do a, a live online show uh, post-pandemic. And uh, hopefully someday we'll be doing it uh, live again. In the meantime, we've translated it into Spanish. So the show can happen in English, in Spanish, for kids, for adults. It's, it's a wonderful and very uh, flexible show. That's excellent. And I have one question here in the chat about how the, the Fire This Time Festival, how the touring of that works, how many people it is, and what the show kind of looks like. The Fire This Time Festival is one of our bigger shows. Uh, we, we, it, it is supposed to be doing uh, this summer at North Carolina Black Rep. Uh, hopefully, we'll see if that, that still happens. That depends on, on, the, on, on the world. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. it'll happen there. Uh, but it comes in various sizes. We've toured it as big as uh, eight performers. We've toured it a little bit smaller. And I think and we've, we're coming to the end here. And I know people can learn more at frigid.nyc. Yep, frigid.nyc. Thank you. When the night has come the land is dark and the moon is the only light that we'll see. Whoa. No, I won't be afraid. No, I, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you don't and I. Ah, nice. Yay. Topical. Topical. Oh, wonderful. Very good. Guys, another round of applause for Deb Zeb. Another round of applause.
What a special treat to see the man himself in front of the camera. I hope you were sounding off in the comments and letting him know how absolutely dashing he looked. Um, fun, 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 cool shows, uh, all shows that will be back once uh, theater is allowed to open again. In the meantime, look them up, send the artists a little message saying you can't wait to see them live, you know. Do the little things, the little things, the little things that matter in life, people. Uh, next up, we have one of the favorite regular shows here at The Crane at Frigid, Funny Women of a Certain Age. The show has been running uh, here monthly in these spaces for probably over a couple of years now, which is pretty amazing. You can find two Showtime Funny Women of a Certain Age specials that you can stream right to your couch at home. And um, of course, Funny Women of a Certain Age has been recording here at The Crane pretty much weekly um, without an audience, of course. And they're still funny, which means that they're really funny because if you're funny without an audience, you're indestructible. That's right. Or crazy. Or maybe that's the same thing. Uh, no matter what the case may be, we look forward to having them rec record a live audience um, show once this is all allowed to happen again. In the meantime, Rhonda Handsome is a regular on this show. And um, yeah, we love her. So let's go check it out. But I love her to death. She is funny. She is bright. Uh, you can hear her every Monday on uh, uh, Tell Me Everything on John Fugelson on Sirius Radio. Welcome, Rhonda Handsome. Yeah. Um, my name is Rhonda Handsome. is real and some things always hanging out and i hate when it's hanging out the back jesus <laughs> and for me being a woman of a certain age you know <laughs> Oh my God, white girl magic tears. I wish I had those magic tears. There was this one girl, she had gone shooting over a stop sign at least three or four times. And finally they took her to court and she cried. She cried, she says, your honor. <laughs> I'm too beautiful to go to jail. <laughs> Steve Kornacki still at that goddamn board. Is he? That's Clyburn's office. That's Pelosi's office. Watch your horn, Sam. Watch your horn. Oh, I love America. I wouldn't want to be an American in any other country. Yeah. I'm here for the next 15 minutes, folks. <laughs> refusal to accept reality and the constant recounts oh my god and that's just Kanye yeah. trying to wash my damn hands I did the entire choreography of Alvin Ailey's revelations whoa Y'all look so good. I wanna buy you a sandwich. <laughs> a sandwich? <laughs> I was so outraged, all I could say was BLT. <laughs> I, you know, Carol was the, the other day. She said that uh, she she wasn't feeling very good about the way things were going in the uh, in the world. <laughs> And I said, well, I'm glad to hear that, Carol, because a couple of weeks ago, white folks was out dancing in the street, dancing. White folks just dancing everywhere, and they were dancing almost on the beat. Yeah. And she's shaking her head. She's not laughing, but she's shaking her fucking head. One millennium tried to insult me by saying, OK, boomer. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Stop looking! <laughs> 
after you've been called a nigga, <laughs> Boomer has no sting whatsoever. <laughs> of a nervous breakdown. Can you tell that? For New Year's Eve, I wanted to have hummus and Prosecco. That's, I had that taste in my mouth, hummus and Prosecco. I live in the South Bronx, so whoop, all bets are off. Go on. I go, do you have any hummus? They go, huh? I go, do you have any hummus? You want ham? I'm standing there going, hummus, hummus, hummus. <laughs> Guy goes to me, miss, this is a liquor store. <laughs> uh, I might say something funny, you know, <laughs> I, I, I might. Am I in my light? <laughs> Am I in my light? If I'm in my light, then da 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 I'm poor and my country is poor and I've never felt more patriotic. So <laughs> I don't know about you guys. It's like, it feels like right now the Statue of Liberty should have its own like OnlyFans page. <laughs> what will do anything for money. I'm always, I would always be amazed at the tunnel vision of that the wealthy managed to have, but still not look at you at all. But there's lots of Swedes, so like Swedish pancake houses are a thing. There's like three or four of them. Um, churches are really big here. There are churches basically everywhere. We have the second most churches per capita in the state of Illinois after Joliet. Huh. Look, I don't have much to give to this world besides what I'm giving to you now. My attention, focus, and ideas from everything I've experienced in life to one focus point. I'm not always going to be doing rhymes. I'm not always going to be speaking like an ignoramus. I'm not always going to be enjoying the fact that I am who I am. I'm just thankful for the times that you guys have helped me, got being audiences members, friends, associates, you know, half -ass. And so I started writing this, and I was like, okay, like, this will fizzle out as soon as COVID does. And, uh, yeah, now I'm on chapter three because <laughs> there's no end in sight. Crazy. Like every 10 minutes, the great lawn would erupt in applause and, and hoots and hollers just as if they had just gotten the news. And seriously, every 10 minutes, the whole time we were in the park, this is happening. And Jillian went through her own tragic stuff last week so she and i are like commiserating and sobbing together and we're like and this happened and then this happened and oh i'm so sorry you had to go through that and oh 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 the cheering yes yes oh! <laughs> so anyway like I'm in and the face I am Zelda Fitzgerald tiptoeing on the Gilded Age. I am Hafiz drunk on the wine of the divine. I am spring break bros with the cheap vodka and fireball celebrating youth knowing it will all be taken away from us. We are a nation drunk in a slumber from which we may never sober. 
going from one party to the next, mesmerized by the late night glow of shows to entertain us, algorithms containing our Pavlovian response, empty vessels to be filled with the phone of the Kardashians tick-tocking the time until our next fix. But when you stop and ponder the emptiness of what you stand on and what the world stands for, you realize how brittle it's become. We go to mysticism, Sufism, the Kabbalah, and Gwyneth Paltrow to explain what can't be. We go to drugs, to wine, to weed, but only hear the echo of Prosecco as we let go of our reality. We're in a circus built of found objects expected to perform without a safety line or spotters. Perched above a pit so dark, Rumi's poetry can't penetrate, but we live each day tiptoeing while knowing. The safety net we were promised was never there. For when we're all drowning, only the yachts get bailed out. The rest of us exist as sulfur smokestacks, flooded levees, packed ICUs, charcoal jungles, and floating plastic. For what we have seen may make spring break and never arrive. Skip to summer, or more likely autumn, spring may never come back, like when reason left us in November 2016. Better to stay drunk. These vessels with which we wrestle are more fragile than we imagined. We waltz on bottle caps, knowing at any moment that we may fall through the looking glass and come back face to face with these horrors. And then she fell, trying to make the best of an empty shell. Tap dancing on top of Hades Town, but even that is dark. And they are digging graves, not at Graves End, but at our local park. For when we wake from our coma, we realize we've been standing on empty packaging this whole time, with a migraine that won't go away. And seasickness in our stomachs, we reflect on a night we barely remember, when we keep down and hide and don't tell them. Because we fear if we ever truly open up, we may shatter. But even empty vessels are worth more than a five or ten cents. They are more real than the safety net and safety masks, which never came. Yes, sobering is terrifying. But every party must come to an end. And I will be standing here, pouring out liquor for the fallen. For when things are stacked against us, hitting concrete will mean we have landed on something real. We will be grounded, and we will be able to walk on our own, finally on a path that we choose. That absolutely gorgeous piece was from the Muse in Brooklyn, Walking the Path That They Choose in Brooklyn since 2011. Um, you met Catherine, Nick, and Jackson at the top of the show. They sang other people's songs then, and we welcome them back to the show now to sing a couple of their own. And I'm dancing to fill time. La, 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 la. Catherine, Nick, and Jackson, you're going to love them.
<laughs> yeah, shake it. Took turns driving all night long Our favorite songs On loop From Bluetooth on our phone We had the windows all rolled down And all around The sound in the air were humming both been out this way before But this time there was something more And we both could feel it It's what we couldn't believe It's what we couldn't believe But it's all kinds of right It's what we couldn't believe It's what we never believed But it's all day and night And it's all kinds of right it was our road philosophy that we didn't want to see. Ways to go, cause it's better not to know. We sing our songs, hold hands and wait for Highway 28. Cause we knew, we knew it was coming. No one needed weather, earth, and sky. But those miles that passed on by, it will be wild with ours and true. It's what we couldn't believe, it's what we couldn't believe. But it's all kinds of right. It's what we couldn't believe, it's what we never believed. But it's all day and night. When we saw the city lights, we knew it was our night to find the place where we belong. For Highway 28 had come, and in the air the hum was ours and weird and we loved it let the city pass us by a song's on loop and running high cause our home is the road we're on it's what we couldn't believe what we couldn't believe but it's all kind of right it's what we couldn't believe it's what we never believed But darlings, I, uh, well, with this number, um, I guess it taps into my pirate energy. And any of you out there who, like me, suffer from such a piratey energy, this song is called A Million Miles Away. The sails, let's catch the wind. Go to some place we've never been. 
and never see these shores again. That'd be fine. Let's find another guiding star to a place where no one knows who we are. Make up new stories about old scars. That'd be fine. Let's go a million miles away. Let's go a million miles away. Let's go a million miles away. That it be fine. Let's go a million miles away. Let's go a million miles away. Let's go a million. Miles away, that it be fine. If the past is too painful, let it go. If too many ghosts still haunt these roads, if the things that you plant here just won't grow. I think it's time. The horizon is full of promises, and what you want is not what this is. So I think it's time to chase new bliss. Yes, I think it's time to go a million miles away. Let's go a million. Miles away, let's go a million miles away. I think it's time. Let's go a million miles away. Let's go a million miles away. Let's go a million miles away. I think it's who has been silently performing chalk with us for years here. Uh, for the next 15 minutes, you will actually hear his voice as he walks you through some really fun and, of course, challenging yoga poses. Don't think it's just going to be downward jogging over here, okay, while you sip on your cocktail from Sam Hood. Adrain? Adrain? Fuck, I fucked it up. Um, so, yes. Yoga, yoga for the people. That's right. Enjoy that. Um, remember the moves. Do it tomorrow morning. Do it tonight. It'll make you feel better either way. Uh, we take no responsibility for any pulled muscles or uh, broken bosses. Okay, next month on Frigid Fridays, uh, it will be an ode to the Frigid Festival performers of past years. Yes, that's right. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please give it up for Joey, the puppet master. Please give it up for Jenny and Arez and everybody that works behind the scenes uh, tirelessly to bring you joy. That's all we want to do. We want to bring you joy. So um, I'm pretty sure we must have succeeded at least for a couple of minutes here and there tonight. Give it up for all the performers you see, you saw tonight. Follow us, like us, love us. We love you. Mwah. Have a good night. Peace, love, and hair grease. I've been your host, Lucy Pole. Hey, gang. 
Uh, my name is Alex Curtis, and I'm the creator and performer of Chalk, a silent comedy, which makes its home right here at Frigid. Uh, I'm going to take you through a 15-ish minute yoga class. Uh, we'll do a vinyasa warm-up, and then uh, to keep in the avian tradition of the Frigid Penguin, uh, we'll work on building up to a pose called Crow Pose. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, Crow Pose or uh, if you're new to yoga generally, please uh, follow along. I uh, will do my best to make this accessible to all skill levels. Uh, if you have yoga blocks, those could be a nice thing to have handy. Uh, pillows, anything that might help you be more comfortable and supported, maybe a couple books. Uh, and if you don't have any of those things, again, no worries. But if you have them, uh, you won't regret just having more tools available to you. So uh, once you're all ready to go, come join me in a comfortable seat. And the way that we'll kick this off is just by taking one centering breath together. So take a moment to close your eyes, bring your hands to your knees, connect your sit bones to the floor. Take a full breath all the way out. Inhale to the very top of your lungs. Hold at the very peak. Holding it full. And all together we'll release a big sigh. <sighs> very nice. Now on your next breath in, float the arms up. Reach your fingers to the ceiling. And as you breathe out, rock forward and come into, onto your hands and knees. Finding your way into a tabletop position. So your palms are on the floor directly beneath your shoulders. Your knees are directly beneath your hips. Your fingers are spread as wide as they can go. And the center of your palms are flat on the floor. Spin the points of the elbows to face backwards. The crease of the elbow points forward. And now we're going to move between cat and cow pose. So first we'll find cow pose, dropping our belly toward the floor, moving the chest forward, pinching the shoulder blades together behind your back. Try and touch your heart to the front of the room. This is cow pose. And as you breathe out, we'll lift the back to the ceiling, tuck the chin to the chest. And this is cat pose. Just move between these two shapes on your own. Inhale. Cow pose. Bringing the breath forward into your chest. Exhaling. Cat pose. As your back lifts to the ceiling, we'll do that three more times. Inhale. Exhale. Keep your shoulders on your back. Make sure you have space around your neck and your ears in both shapes. So you never feel that there's any pinching or closing in. Your neck is long. The whole time. Good finishing your third set of cat and cow. And then from cat pose, you'll tuck the toes under. And as you exhale, press your butt back up into the air, coming into a downward facing dog pose. And you can make your first downward facing dog pose fluid. Close your eyes and just listen to your body. Check in with what you're feeling. Just gathering information about where you're at today. So there's no right or wrong. It's really your own inner personal exploration. And now from your downward facing dog pose, we're gonna tie this into our first flow. So find your way forward into a plank pose. Your shoulders are directly over your hands, your legs are long. And now we're gonna drop, keep your, keeping your hips in the air exactly where they are, drop your knees to the mat. Now keeping your hips in the air, we're gonna lower the chest and chin to the floor. Knees, chest, chin pose. Notice my butt still sticking up into the air. Now we'll stretch the toes back, flip the feet, press the pelvis down, lift the chest up. This is called baby cobra pose. And then as you breathe out, lower, touch your forehead to the floor. We're going to inhale, press into the hands, move your butt to the back of the room again. This is a variation of our child's pose. You might be feeling a gentle stretch in your shoulders. And as you breathe out, straighten your legs, and we're back in down dog. We'll rehearse this three times together. Inhale, forward, plank pose. Connect your movement and your breathing. Take the time that you need. Exhaling, lower. Knees, chest, chin, your hips stay in the air. Inhaling, baby, cobra pose. Stretching the toes, lifting the chest. There's no pressure in the hands. Exhale, lower the forehead. Inhaling, arms long, hips back. Child's pose variation. Exhale, down dog. Good, do this two more times at your own pace. If you're familiar, close your eyes, do this on your own. Otherwise, you're welcome to follow along with me. But we're just warming ourselves up here.
focusing on linking your inner experience and your outer experience, your breath and your body. Do it after you finish this last round of your knees, chest, chin flow. We'll meet up in our downward facing dog pose. Good, and this time we're facing dog pose. You already might be feeling a little different than you were a moment ago in your down dog. Notice the way that we're changing constantly as we move through this practice. And then from down to facing dog pose, lift your right leg up into the air. Inhale as you open the hip and bend into the knee. Breathe into your right side ribs. And then as you breathe out, put your shoulders over your hands. Try to actually get touch your knee to your nose. Very nice. Then come right back up. Feel like a dog pose. Now we're going to bring our right knee to touch the right armpit so the knee is wider than the elbow. Keep your chest up, shoulders back. Lift your right leg up, your leg in dog pose. Now other side, cross, cross the body, transit your right knee to your left armpit. Inhale your right leg up, your leg in dog pose. And as you breathe out, step your right foot forward in between your hands, all 10 toes point forward. From here, float the arms up, inhaling high lunge, the fingertips rise toward the ceiling. And then as you breathe out, turn your back foot down, lengthen the arms. So now you're in a warrior two. The front knee is directly on top of the front heel. Your back leg is long, and your front heel is in the middle of your back arch. Flipping your right palm to face up. Inhale, reach up and back for a reverse warrior. So you're breathing length into your right side ribs. And as you breathe out, we're going to bring our right hand toward the floor, inside of the right foot. Open your left arm up, reaching for the ceiling. This is called side angle. This may be a place for you to grab a block, placing a block beneath your right hand for support. Otherwise, you're just pressing your right tricep into your right knee, and we're starting to feel an opening in our right hip. Stay here for three breaths. Two breaths. Inhale as you open your chest, and exhale two hands to the floor. Walk your fingers forward, step forward onto your front leg, Standing splits, giving your right hamstring a stretch. And then as you breathe out, bring both of your feet to the front of your mat. Forward fold. Inhale for a half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Arms reach out to the side. The palms meet up and over your head. And as you breathe out, sink your hands to your heart. As you breathe in, float the arms up. The palms meet overhead. And as you breathe out, swan dive all the way down to your forward fold. Inhale for your half lift, flat back. Exhale, hands to the ground. Inhale, step back to plank pose. And now we'll revisit our knees, chest, chin flow. Lowering knees, chest, chin. Baby cobra. We'll lower the forehead. Child's pose. Down dog. So you can stick with that version of the flow if you like, or if you'd like to make this a little bit more challenging, we can now introduce our chaturanga flow. For the chaturanga flow, we'll come forward to plank pose. And now keeping your elbows directly on top of your hands, rock forward, bend the elbows to 90 degrees. This is our lower push-up chaturanga. The elbows are close to the body, press into your hands, flip your feet, lift the chest up, reaching the heart forward. This is upward facing dog. And as you exhale, roll over your toes and your back and down dog. Good. If you're sticking with your knees, chest, chin flow, continue with that. And if you're doing your chaturanga flow, we'll do this together two more times. Inhaling forward to plank. Lower to 90 degrees, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Breathe again. Fill your chest. Exhale over the toes, down dog. Good. Last time, I have a flow on your own, connected to your breathing. Breathing in your downward facing dog. From down dog, lift your left leg up. Inhale as you open the hip and bend the knee, breathing into your left side ribs. Exhale, touch your knee into your nose, shoulders over your hands. Inhale, your left leg up and back. Now touching your left knee to your left armpit, wider than the elbow. Inhale, left leg up and back. And now touch your left knee to your right elbow. Keep your hips lifted. Inhaling your left leg up and back. 
And as you exhale, step forward in between your hands. All 10 toes point forward, inhale. Lift the arms up, high lunge. Exhale, open the arms, turn your back foot down. Warrior two, the front knee is on top of the heel. Back uh, arches in the front heels in the middle of your back arch. Shoulders stay heavy. Flipping your left palm to face up. Inhale, reach up and back for reverse warrior. Breathing into your left side ribs. And now bring your left hand toward the floor inside of your left foot again. Then maybe you support with your books or your blocks. Open your right arm up, stack your shoulders. Trying to turn your heart to point toward the right side wall. And so as you feel your left elbow, your left tricep pressing into the left knee, your left thigh, you should be feeling a stretch right there in your hip. Three breaths. Two breaths. Inhaling. And exhale, two hands to the floor. All 10 toes point forward. Start to spider walk the fingers forward and they carry you forward into a standing splits, dropping your chest toward the ground, kicking your right foot to the ceiling. Keep your hips lifted. You don't have to lift the right side. Feeling the stretch in your left hamstring. Good, and then drop both feet to the floor. Inhale for your half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive, arms rise, palms meet. Exhale, sink your hands to your heart. Inhale, reverse swan dive, the arms rise, the palms meet. And exhale, to forward fold. Inhale for your half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold forward, good. You keep facing the same way that you are now. I'm just gonna rotate, so I'm a little easier to see. So now we're gonna walk our feet a little bit wider, so about as wide as the mat. Turn your feet out to 45 degrees, so the toes are wider than the heels. And then we're gonna bend our knees, drop our butt towards the floor, bring the hands to heart center, the elbows are inside of the knees. This is a Malasana low squat. If this low squat is difficult to maintain, you can put a support beneath your butt, uh, if, whether that's a yoga block or a couple of books, or just something that gives you support to be up right here. We're pressing our hands down, which widens the elbows so that we've, we're now opening both sides of our hips at the same time. And we'll take just two big breaths here. Trying to breathe all the way down to the pelvic floor. Keep your shoulders back, chest up. Inhale. Exhale. Good, one more breath in. And as you breathe out, we'll lengthen the legs, hang the forward fold. Good, you can uh, drop to a squat and just watch forward. So we've done our warm up, and now I'll introduce you to crow pose. So crow pose is a balancing posture that I consider part of a family of yoga that I consider that I call party trick poses. If you can do them, you don't reach enlightenment or anything, uh, but they can be a fun thing to play with and maybe to show off at a party. So uh, feel free to experiment with this, but know that uh, you can still be a very successful yogi and never do crow. So there's really, there are no stakes here. So uh, there are a couple of variations of crow pose. The one that we'll start with is we're gonna begin in a shape very much like our Malasana squat. So we're up here sort of in a squat with our knees wide. And now we're gonna create our chaturanga arms, our nice 90 degrees here. Hunching forward, get your elbows underneath the thighs. So now I'm creating a little bit of a shelf. I'm gonna place my palms on the floor and lift up onto the tippy tiptoes and start to move my weight forward so my feet lift up and off the floor. So this tends to be the more accessible version of the pose. Uh, because we can support our elbows and the meaty part of our inner thigh. Uh, if this is something that feels a little frightening, you're welcome to put pillows in front of you so that if you fell forward on your face, you can't fall that far. Same thing, you can do that with uh, a block or book so that if you came forward, you would just tap your forehead. Uh, a hot tip is to make sure that you're moving your support forward. Notice that as I come into this, I'm not moving my body weight down to lift my hips. I'm moving my chest forward, which creates the counterbalance. It's like putting weight on the other side of a seesaw so we can find some equilibrium. So we're just gonna play with that rocking motion. 
Again, creating your, the shelf here with your elbows, hands flat, lifting up with the toes, chest moving forward, finding your courage and finding your flight there. Uh, the next version of crow pose that can be, uh, that looks fancier, but is much less comfortable, works with the same principle where we're creating a shelf, but now rather than supporting our inner thighs, we're supporting our knees. So my knees are tucked onto my triceps. Again, I've got my chaturanga shelf, putting my hands on the floor, lifting up onto my toes and rocking my weight forward, not down, until I can lift my feet up. Uh, this is less comfortable, I think, for everybody because you just have the bony part of your knee pressing into your tricep. Um, but if you wanted to Instagram something, this is probably uh, the fancier looking version. Ideas are exactly the same. Again, we have our shelf. I'm moving my chest forward. So it's really about using balance rather than muscle to achieve this. And you can create a support with a yoga block or a pillow to catch you if you fall forward. Uh, I hope that that's something that you can enjoy playing with. Uh, again, there are, there's, uh, there are no stakes, it's all fun. Uh, but hopefully this is something that you can show off on your next Zoom party. So just we'll close this together by taking a quick seat in line with one last centering breath. So coming down to your sit bones, hands on your knees, your thighs, drop your shoulders. Close your eyes and take a moment just to notice to yourself, perhaps how your body feels differently now at the end of our brief practice together than you did when we started. Appreciate the change that your practice has made within you. And then take a full breath in. Exhale all the way out. Last time, inhale to the top of your lungs. Holding at the tip top, and this time we'll release on voice, a big sigh. Uh, Bring your hands to your heart, by your chin to your chest. Thank you.